We do it from here. Look at God. Okay. <laughs> Is it Michael? Hey, everybody. Hey, hey. We are here. We are live. We are ready to get this show ready. on the road. We are ready. I think we kind of started on time. What you think? We did better than we did last week. <laughs> I, I, I really, I really just believe that we we did better. But everybody, welcome to the perfect pair with me, Tangerine, and I'm Marty, and we are here for our second show. Um, yesterday, last week, we had a good time, had good drinks, talk nails, and just talk about everything. Yes, we did. Today, we're going to have a special guest on our show a little bit later. Um, somebody to keep us living our best life okay um but before anything we have to start the show off the right way we have to start it off the right way and this week um i actually posted um a copy of the recipe for the cocktail that we're gonna have today which is a fizzy pear punch that we're having mm. so and because we will not be making multiple drinks today <laughs> guess what we're gonna do <laughs> Yes, we're making a mega batch. Okay, we, we can just sit here, drink and talk, drink and talk, because we always know it gets better when when the drinks kick in. <laughs> so, how we gonna get this started? We are gonna take this some fancy juice, y'all. This is the first time I ever saw pear juice. So we're gonna have four cups of pear juice, and I brought everything here. As y'all can see, we changed locations today. Yeah, yeah. We're going to pray the internet is better here at Casa Marty. <laughs> what is it? Ca no, Casa. Casa. Casa Marty. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Not that bilingual. Though. It's fine. It's fine. So we're going to have four cups of, and this is going to make 12 servings, but we're going to have four cups of pear juice. Well, I'll be doggone. That's the whole dang on bottle. Why didn't you just tell me to pour the whole bottle in here? Mm, like, I like the whole bottle. Would you like what I'm gonna do with that little bit of juice, y'all? Like, what am I seriously? If we use a little bit of juice, then we can increase the amount of alcohol to kind of oh, we're gonna it increase off. the amount of alcohol anyway. My girl, it's my type of party. So then it calls for three fourths cups of vanilla vodka and because my local liquor store did not have any of the national brand uh vodkas in a like a liter bottle i got this small bottle of ciroc french vanilla mm -hmm. so no matter of fact we ain't measuring nothing let's just pour it in yes mm. 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 And we'll just leave a swallow in here. I mean, we left a swallow a pair. A pair, swallow like maybe like somebody gonna make one one with later. Like, I'm with, it. I'm with it. Then we're gonna have now. This I'm not gonna play about. So this is sim simple syrup, and we're just gonna have a cup of this. I mean, just to balance out all that alcohol we just put in there. Okay. Ooh, matter of fact, let's put all the simple syrup because I'm not gonna make no more of that. Mm. And then we're going to add a bottle of Prosecco. A whole bottle? We're going to add some Prosecco because we put the whole bottle of the I mean, the I get it. In there. I like Prosecco. So let's get this started without me blowing my eye out. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy Sunday. Year. Happy second week of January. Mm. Why does this make me smile? I'm like really feeling good right now. Just watching it. It's the fears for me, y'all. Thank you, Celeste. There's some more in there. Hey, okay. Derek. Shout out to Madison checking in. Hey, Derek. Oh, look. <laughs> so, y'all, I am up here, man in the computer. She I told y'all, we was going to be better this week. Look how professional we are now. Okay, so we got one for her. Because guess who ain't making no more drinks today? Me. And one for me. I'm excited about this. Okay. Mm. Cheers. 
Perfect pair. Mmm, delish. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Now we can get started, folks. Oh, yeah. Woo -hoo. Yeah. Mmm. Yes. Wait a minute. I don't even know where we are right now. What, what, what are we hey, Mama about? Jones. Hey, so, Mama. We finished our cocktail portion of the show, and we're going to jump into some current events, just a few, just the high level ones. So, what jumped out at you this week? You know what jumped out at me. What? This dangy. Everything that's happening in Washington oh, at the Capitol. Yeah. Like it was a debacle. Um, I can't say that I was angry though. It I guess I was a little perturbed by the lack of police force, as everybody was. Okay. You know, um, I watched it and I just continuously shook my head. Like, I can't believe this is really happening right now. Um, where are the police? Why are they not standing? Where on the were stair, the police? Did stair? anybody know where the police were? How is it that they got into the you on know, the floor and they was... sitting in chairs taking selfies? I mean, like, everybody's what? phone was out. Mm. You know, I can't even go into the ransom without almost being attacked by a dog. So it's yeah, th this is a lot going on. So um, that was. That was a high point. Well, not a high point, but a low point. That was what um, her week week's highlight was. My current event of the week was Kim and Kanye getting a divorce, y'all. Hey, I didn't hear about that. What about time? Kanye is crazy. He ain't crazy. Kanye ain't I'm crazy. Sorry. He ain't I'm crazy. Sorry. Listen, I'm sorry. Because I've been, in, I've been in therapy, folks. You cannot just call people crazy. But he's crazy. He has he he's has misunderstood issues. Kanye is misunderstood. Okay, he is not under, misunderstood. And to everyone that is speaking, hey Mika, hey Tish, hey Jennifer, hey, Greg, Jamal. we have Greg, we having punch pear punch with prosecco and some vanilla vodka and some simple syrup. But you know, I'll give you a recipe later. Oh, it's James Bird. Hey. He said it wasn't a lack of police force, is a lack of deployment of police force. Ah. And a lot of the police share the same feelings that these protesters did. You got a come point. On. Come on, come Mr. on, Mr. Bird. Yes. Come on. That's my family right there. That's that's my family able to talk. So. Oh, you know what, Greg? Kanye does have a head injury. Did you forget that? What head injury? He had the breakdown when his mama died. No, no, no. Before, remember through the wire? Oh, through the wire. And there's our song for today, folks. <laughs> I don't know the words, but there's our song. He was a mess. He he is a mess. And okay. I still think he's crazy. Um, he may be bipolar or whatever. Maybe I shouldn't call him crazy. He has issues and he needs to be committed. Because I've been in therapy, you just can't go around saying people have issues. You have to find out what's going on with them. You just can't go out here saying that they have issues. So yeah. Hey everybody, uh Alex. I'm sure there will be a little bit of punch left, but yes. you know, you never it's know. Because we're not going to get too crazy because I'm so excited when we get to our guests. Yes. So we can't be drinking too much because, you know, <laughs> we got a doctor coming to the show and I don't want her to talk about how, you know, this is. But and I don't want y'all to get hopped up on my crystals and moon stars and uh, tonics. So we're going to let a professional tell us what to do to stay healthy. Okay. Yes. Um. Let's see. Moving on to our next topic, our next segment is going to be pressed. It's pressed it, okay? And when I say pressed it, that means she's we're going to talk about pressed. she's pressed nails. And I am actually wearing a pair today. I had them on last night as well. Y'all should have saw her. Fabulous, make a drink, struggling. Make a drink, <laughs> struggling, <laughs> struggling, because I do not with the nails. I do not. The nails were purchased for date nights and nights when I would be doing nothing. No type of shit was going to be done and I was going to be the person doing it. And now I have on the nails and I was making drinks. And she, side note, she made the bomb drinks for my friend Ashante's 40th birthday party. Um, We had three. We had, I'm going to see if I remember the name. We had Jameson May. Mm hmm the Jameson Mule, mm -hmm. and Black Drinks Matters. Baby, that was my favorite. <laughs> Anytime you have a black cocktail, it's my favorite. Yes. 
So we had a drink called Black um, Drinks Matter. And maybe I'll do a live um, demonstration for that so you all can see that. But yeah, that's what happened with that. And um, yeah. Matter. Wait, wait, but that's not okay. me. That's that's our stuff. Uh, I'm so, trying to do too much. I'm trying. Okay, I was singing, but I can see all the things here. So okay, just letting y'all know. So so sorry to switch over, but she did have on she's pressed, and I have one she's pressed too. Today I'm wearing Wild Child, which was the set that was in the Who Knew Hulu will be calling me <laughs> box. Ah! So it's in the swag box. So. 50 sets of these that were made. Um, and I know I've done many videos about this because I was like so super excited about everything. Um, but what I have new coming out. Yes. Let's talk about the newness. Let's talk about it. Since we talked about the Capitol, I have a new set for inauguration. Um, I haven't th thought of a name for it. Maybe just the Biden Harris set. Let me see. Where is it at? See if I don't see. like the Biden here. What, what are we gonna call it? This is the new nail set. If y'all can see, Kamala Harris is on there. We have Biden Harris. I love it. I like I like Madam VP. Madam VP, because her pit. She do, we do have a big picture of her on here, and she is the VP. She is. That's Black Girl Magic. <laughs> mm. Madam VP. So what you want to do is if you want a pair of She's pressed, Madam VP nails, mm -hmm. or this lovely black set here. Black Beauty. Oh, that's the name of it. Sweat. Actually, this started out as a um, as a custom set, and I don't know what happened. She put it online, and then the people started liking it. So now I got to get another set because other people got my set, <laughs> and we walking around like twins and shit. And I ain't with the shits. Okay, but that's a good thing. That means your ideas. Everyone loves them. So when I put your set online and everybody was like, dang, that's flat. How Don't nobody want to hear that shit when they thought about this. This was supposed to be my winter set. So guess what? You can order it now and I'll figure out something else and probably going to have to get some type of NDA clause in her uh, ordering process to not make my sets for nobody else because I got to have the shits for myself. And if y'all can figure it out, shit probably my favorite word. So maybe we come up with, with the shits. With the, sh with the shits. <laughs> so, Daphne, the colors in this set. I'm thinking you're talking about Madam VP. Ah! Oh, Daphne. That's Daphne. That's Daphne. Yes. The colors in the set are you have two red and one blue per hand, and then two that are designed. One nail has Kamala's ha Harris face on it. One nail has Biden Harris on one hand, and the other hand, Biden Harris, and both. Um, president and vice president's face on it so you get four nails design and those will be on the website later on today now that we have a name for it so look for madam vp nails on she's press.com listen daphne i i understand i may be a trendsetter but some shit i want to keep to myself <laughs> that's just that's just that's just the me for me it's the me for me okay it's the me for me so I think this will be a perfect time because mm -hmm. it's a me for me, you know, and when you take care of yourself, you are thinking of you first. I think this will be an awesome time to allow our guests to come in and just give us a rundown or some things that we should be doing as we age because we're all aging, folks. That is true. Oh, what a matter of fact, you all are aging. We're getting better. I'm, I'm, we're like fine wine. Yes. We're getting better with time. I am... Preserving. <laughs> so let's just start. Um, I'm about to bring her to the studio. Let me turn her on. Wait a minute. Let's see. Here we go. One, two, she three. Got it, huh? <gasps> ah, yes! Yes! <laughs> we doing stuff. So yes. Our first guest. We figured it out. We did it. So let me pull this up because I want to say all her letters, her name. I want to make sure I get all of this right Please. and where she can explain it because she worked hard for every single letter that's on here. And I'm just going to tell you, when I put it up on my page this morning, I literally kept going back and forth because I didn't want to miss a letter. I didn't want to have it out of place or nothing. I wanted to be right. Thank so. you, ladies. Okay, so let me just introduce her first. Um, she is one of my dear best friends. Um, we met... 
1998, we were sweet mates. I bust in her room the first day at Eastern Michigan while she was in the bed because I just moved in and she had moved in before me. It was like, hey, I'm Chandra. And she was just like, oh. <laughs> like, it is too early for this. But she was the first person who taught me about MAC makeup in college. Um, she has worked so very hard to get where she is. I'm very proud of her. She's been through the struggle. She was, I think it was LPN, then RN, and now she is. <clears throat> say it right. Let me. me say it right. Say it right. I got to read it. Dr. Christina Latner, DNP, ED, AGNP, C, AMP, BC. When I grow up, I want the same type of respect. I'm Chandra Jones, MD, MED. <laughs> <laughs> so let's everybody welcome the dear, wonderful Dr. Christina Latner. Hey, Thanks. Christina. Hi, guys. Can you hear me okay? Can I hear you? Can I hear you? Is your volume on? Mm -hmm. I can't hear you. I shouldn't be muted. Can you hear me now? No. Hold on, folks. Hold on. You look. Yeah. Hold on. Hold folks. on. Wait a minute. Um, I don't I'm, know what I'm saying, but it's, it's a good on this end. Yeah, I'm definitely not muted. I hear it. Guess what? My computer was muted. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, dear, dear sweet Chandra. <laughs> Wait, we got it. So we have to mute her computer because we didn't want, you know, the extraness. And I do hear echo. Yes, yeah, because I turn yours off. Well, maybe because she's on my computer. Everyone can hear me. Like, it looks like from the chat. So I think I'm good. There okay. we go. All right. But a quick correction. I was never an LPN. I became a registered nurse at 21. So get it right. Get it right. <laughs> sorry. I, she, sorry, everybody. She has never been an LPN. She started off an RN. Yes. She started off doing a big. Yes. All right. So, Christina. Tell us about all these letters. Uh, those letters, as you mentioned, were hard and earned. So I definitely like to utilize all of my alphabet soup. But the DNP, I have a doctorate of nursing practice and um, a certificate in nursing education. The AGNP is an adult gerontology nurse practitioner that's certified. And then there's also adult nurse practitioner certified. So the patient population that I take care of is primarily from 14 to death. Oh, wow, 14 to death. Yes. So and I am currently, as you may not have mentioned, but I'm in Chicago, but I am still Detroit 313 to heart, but I do practice here at Chicago Family Health Center and um, a professor at a university. <laughs> professor, what university is this? I'm at currently at DePaul University here in Chicago. I've been here for seven years. Mute my mic. I don't know how. Because if I mute it, then mute I can't it, hear mute her. Mute it. Mute it. Mute it. I don't. Okay. Can we hear you? I can hear you guys. Oh, we can hear you now. We figured it out. Okay. Now we're good. Okay. So the reason we wanted to do this is last week I went and had a mammogram. Mm -hmm. um, and we all know at age 40, women have to start having mammograms annually. And there's a lot of different things that's going on with our bodies that start to change at a certain age. Um, so people don't regularly get physicals. If anybody knows me, I use all my insurance. So I'm going to get every physical. If I cough, if I sneeze, I'm going to the doctor. Um, but we need to take care of ourselves. And a lot of our young Black people, they're dying, 40s and 30s, with health issues. So mm -hmm. I would like you to talk to us more about what's important that we need to make sure that we're doing. I have a question first. I have a question first. Yes. Is this alcohol giving me any problems? <laughs> Don't ask that question. No. Let's let's go back. We can go back to to the alcohol question. Yes. And I would definitely give you some insight on that. But thank you. I think. Well, first of all, thank you guys for having me. So I think this conversation is extremely important because if there's anything that 2020 taught us, particularly 
with the introduction of COVID-19 into our society is African Americans, Black people, people of color, Indigenous people, any way you want to slice it, died at un, unproportionate amounts. And it was particularly related to our healthcare disparities. So there's a lot of conspiracy theorists that are out and um, we hear different things such as, oh no, the disease was just given to us or it, it affected us just worse than others. No, we we kind of helped create that a little bit too. And we helped create that by our lack of preventative care. So preventative care is one of the first and the best things that you can do for your health. In regard And in regards to that, it's not just doing the tests that you should do at 40 or 50 years of age. It's going to the doctor every year for your year. That is when your blood is drawn. That is when a complete physical exam is done. That is to see if you need any additional testing or imaging or genetic testing, so on and so forth. But we don't do it. There's a lot of people that don't even use their dental insurance to go twice a year. I know. I so, know. so if you don't take care of your teeth, how many people are actually going to the doctor to get their yearly physical exams? And it definitely changes based on gender. So with females, you should be getting a complete pap exam every single year. Some of the preventative services are now saying that you can wait every three years for yeah. cervical cancer. Um, a lot of these recommendations come from the United States Preventative Task Force. So that's pretty much an organization that says what the insurance companies will and won't pay for. So a doctor may get a recommendation to say it's okay for somebody to get a pap done every three years. However, you as an individual person says, nope, my insurance will pay for it every year. I want it every year. Every year. Any woman that's taking birth control pills or has an IUD in place, you automatically qualify for a PAP every year. If you're sexually active, you definitely qualify for a PAP every year. Oh, yeah. So it's just about knowing who to talk to, who to ask questions to, and then to be able to advocate for your own health. So outside of the um, yearly physicals that we should get, another big one is definitely screening for cardiovascular disease and hypertension. There are tons of African Americans and people that I know that regularly their blood pressure is greater than the recommended standards, which are 140 over 90. So every single time you take your blood pressure, you should be less than 140 on the top and less than 90 on the bottom. If you're higher than that at any time, you need to be treated for prehypertension. Yes, go ahead. Okay, I thought it was 120 over 80. 140 over 90 is when we consider somebody to be hypertensive. So at that point, mm. coming in at 140 over 90, medications need to be started. But oh, average, doctor. Average on a daily basis, yes, you should definitely be 120 over 80. Mm. So anything above that, you need to be treated for hypertension. And people don't realize that high blood pressure is the number one cause for cardiovascular disease, stroke, and kidney failure. Your kidneys are actually regulated. Um, kidneys <laughs> regulate your blood pressure, period. So if you have high blood pressure, kidneys are going to be ruined. And from the kidney failure, that's when you end up on dialysis and have several other comorbidities. So in our communities, a lot of people who are untreated for hypertension, untreated for diabetes, or they're pre-hypertensive, pre-diabetic, those are a lot of people that were exposed to COVID and ultimately didn't survive it. So that's why COVID has such a high mortality rate in our community based on how we do or don't take care of ourselves right now. Interesting. Now, it, just get a little deep. Now, I've heard that with some men, they don't, if they have high blood pressure, they do not take medicine for it because of the effects it can have on them. So is that true for all men or because I think that's some reason why they don't take high blood pressure and our men are dying off at a fast rate? Well, let's be honest. So hypertension medications do what they're supposed to do, which is either going to cause vasodilation or vasoconstriction. So I'm sorry. Hypertension meds will cause vasodilation. So that's going to be opening up the vessels to decrease the pressure that the elevated blood pressure is causing on the blood vessels. So that's what hypertension medication does. However, in dilating the vessels, you're no longer allowing them to constrict, which obviously is going to have some issues down below in terms of erection, being able to get sexually aroused, et cetera. So you do find a lot of men ignore taking their blood pressure medication mm. because they want to have sex. That's mm have sex in a stroke mm. or you have blood pressure under control and then you'll be able to have sex and no medication and decrease your chance for stroke. 
So a new question for the men out here. Do you have blood pressure issues? That's and I'm going to be asking. Right. So <laughs> and then you choose like if you have high blood pressure, are you not taking it for what can happen? Or because you, you want to be sexually fulfilled? Wow. OK, this is wow. So, you can be sexually fulfilled and stroke all the way out. Then no one's going to want to have sex with you. So nobody. Period. So, I mean, so it's like pick your poison. And the way we avoid all of that, even the conversations about medication and whether to take them or not, is start taking care of yourself now. So we all know we have a lot of problems in our community with black people don't exercise. Might sound like a stereotype, but a lot of it is true. Let's be honest. I know for years I had the battle between do I get my hair done or do I work out? So that's real for black women. I go to if I work out in the morning, I got to go to work later in the morning. And do I want my hair looking crazy? So you got to make a decision. There are tons of protective styles now in regards to braids, which I've been wearing faithfully because my health is a little more important than going to the hairdresser every two weeks or get you a skill and craft, learn how to press and flat iron, but do what you need to do. Other than or you can do like I do, ladies. Just get like five wigs and you there can swap them out. Right, bam. Listen, they got ready. Right. Hey. Um, Sean, do you want to take some questions from yes, uh, one on? that someone just asked about the wonderful, lovely Artan, my favorite roommate, my only roommate in college. She asked about can we talk about fibroids and are there any natural um, remedies for fibroids? There are no natural remedies for fibroids. Now, don't get me wrong, I am a person that I believe in holistic medicine, I believe that there are certain um, vitamins and supplements that you can take to keep yourself healthy, but vitamins and supplements are not going to prevent you from having a disease that you already have currently. Black women are disproportionately affected by fibroids and um, fibroids and oh god, the other thing just slipped my mind. Is this fibroids. Oh, um, endometriosis. Sorry. Um, so we're affected with that just hereditarily, a lot of it is genetic. But the way that you treat and you deal with your fibroids is first of all, you need to get a pap every single year. If there are changes in your period, deal with it. That's what your gynecologist is for. Go in, deal with it, get ultrasounds, understand what's going on, and then you can be treated from there. There's also tons of advancements in fibroid and endometriosis surgery. A lot of it doesn't include downtime. There's not a lot of incisions to be made. Um, there's a certain thing called ablation where they actually make a small camera hole and kind of go into the uterus and just burn off the excessive fibroids or endometriosis lining so that you can have a healthy and productive uterus. And then I also am, I have no fear in telling women, if you are of a certain age, you've had all the children that you're going to have, you don't need a uterus. What do you need that extra packaging for? Get rid of it. Tampons are expensive. Oh, where, where do we sign up for that program? <laughs> so, I mean, and back in the day, hysterectomies used to be all about needing your husband's consent. And if you already had a certain right. kids, you can have no children and decide that I no longer want you need it. it or to take birth control. Hysterectomies can be covered by your insurance at 100%. But back to the fibroids. Treat them when you know that there's a problem. If you ignore them or you only feel like, well, when my period's over and the bleeding stop, life goes on, you're just letting them grow. Fibroids are, I don't like to use the word fibroid and cancer together, but fibroids are just a mass amount of cells that will continue to grow until you shut them down. So that means lots of pain, pain with sex, um, atrocious periods that continue to, to bleed. Just get them taken care of. Fear is the only thing that actually causes us more harm. And I'm, I'm going to just say this. I'm going to be kind of transparent. She is right. I have battled with fibroids in the past. And part of the problem when I first had them, I didn't want to go to the doctor because I was scared of what they was going to say. Christina mm -hmm. has been the recipient of many phone calls crying or what should I do to the point where I'm calling Christina on speakerphone to talk to my doctor while I'm there. And I value her opinion. I feel like I need your phone number when I go back to the doctor and tell her, like, I don't need this uterus. Wait. So I don't need it. What are we doing? The question is, speaking of, because we're going through, me, this is what we do when the drinks kick in. We when go the drinks, everywhere. Like. So we know about fibroids, but women, check it out. Hey, know? Jackie, I like the doctor, too. I, I'm with I'm with the doctor. 
Jackie said that she liked it. It looks like someone had a question about doesn't fibroids bring on early menopause? Yeah, yes, I saw that. No. So um all of for ladies, all of our hormone production is coming from your ovaries. You can have a, a total abdominal hysterectomy, removing the uterus, keep a keep a ovary there so that you have the correct amount of estrogen. I can't wait till my oh, next doctor's appointment. So keep the ovaries, remove the uterus. Yes. I can't uh, wait. I can't wait till I go to the doctor the next time. You're not wait. about to get a hysterectomy right now. <laughs> Do you, I mean, I think if you've had, and to be honest with you, um, there there have been disproportionate cases in African American women receiving uterine cancer. So if you don't need it, I or don't need it. You had all the children that you want. I do. Why are he's black grown? Men? Stop. You still got about three years. For what? I don't know. Because I, I think I got like one more year. I think I got one good year left in me. I think I got one good year. That's you. Yeah, I know. I, know I did what God asked me to do. I came, I was fruitful and multiplied, and guess what? We ain't doing it no more. Time two, time three. You're done. You're done. done. <laughs> you're done. So Janelle says that she has one and it's giving her a problem. She's going to tell the doctor that she doesn't need it. All right. If if <laughs> hey, right. you don't need it, you don't need it. But in all honesty, um, the best ways to to go about a hysterectomy if you wanted to have the conversation with your gynecologist be very honest with what's going on with your period have your um your lab work done so that they can see is these are these excessive periods causing signs and symptoms of anemia particularly iron deficiency anemia those are going to cause bigger health care problems later on so those alone will qualify for you to be able to go ahead and get a hysterectomy and also there's some great doctors and specialists in Michigan, um, and like I tell Chandra all the time, is you need to find a physician that is a master of their particular craft, not a jack of all trades. And meaning mm -hmm. regular run of the mill, ob gyne is not going to be an expert on fibroid or uterine issues for women. So you find you an expert for somebody who deals with fibroids and uterus issues all the time, and that's the person that you allow to perform your surgery, that was a thing. second opinion and get additional testing done. Yeah, I didn't see. And until I talked to Christina, I didn't know certain doctors were a thing that they had. Like I knew specialty like heart, but I didn't know it was a fibroid doctor. You know what I'm saying? I thought that's what your OBGYN does. No, no, no. Because my OBGYN never told me about that. Well, of course, because she wants to keep you on the roster. However, um, all physicians, like if you have somebody who they initially became an OB-GYN because they have a special interest in women's health. Then from there, they build upon their education, get more, more certificate and training, and then just become a specialist in that. I'm sorry, it kind of went out it a little kinda, bit. Yeah, it just did. Um, can you kind of repeat that, what you just said, please? Oh, I'm sorry. So um, you might have your ob gyn who went into gynecology because they have a strong research and belief in women's health. However, from that initial start of their career, then they branch off into some type of specialty treatment. So you might have an, um, an OB who is actually an oncologist gynecologist. All they deal with is cancer specifically to women health and women organ. You might have some of those that are specially trained and researched in um, what they call uterine disorders, which are fibroids and endometriosis. Okay. So Such are, and anything that you have going on is definitely what you need. And it looks like somebody wrote, oh, I think that's Artan, talked about incontinence. So if you are starting to experience bladder incontinence and you already know that you have a history of fibroids and or endometriosis, you are causing yourself to now develop bladder incontinence. The yeah. growth of the fibroids are pushing down on your ureter that is causing you to have intermittent incontinence with coughing, sneezing, laughing, et cetera. So you're actually allowing these issues to get worse by not dealing with the, um, the straight up issue, which are the fibroids. So no amount of Kegels are going to stop it. No amount of elderberry or some herb that you find at some black magic vitamin store is going to stop it. You need to have straight up Western medicine. Now, if you get your uterus removed or if you get an ablation done and all the fibroids are removed, if you believe in eating an onion once a day to keep it at bay and it works for you, great. But that is not your initial treatment. Mm. Okay. Um, dang. That was, that was a lot. That was a lot. So, wait a minute. Wait, I got a question. Look. Oh, wait. Let's see if the, the 
viewers have, have any questions. Blah, 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 blah. It's that time of the show, y'all. My tongue don't work. Um. <laughs> okay, let's see. So it hasn't been any other questions, but what I wanted to know, I know we've been talking about fibroids and women issues and OBGYNs. I kind of want to flip it over to me. In a yeah, little bit. what do, what should men be um, concerning themselves with um, at this mid range age point? What should they be focusing on? Mika, crazy. I'm sorry. For men, I would say from the ages of about thirty to definitely forty, their main focus needs to be cardiovascular health. So they really need to deal with the probability of developing hypertension and definitely de de blah, definitely developing. Um, pre-diabetes or becoming diabetic. So keep in mind, if you develop diabetes in your 20s, 30s, et cetera, that's a type two. Type two diabetes is your fault. You are not born with it. If you are a type one and you don't make any insulin, then okay, you, you, know, you have a longstanding genetic issue. Type two is because you are overweight, unhealthy, and eat bad, period. So those are the things that men, particularly in that age group, they need to worry about. Once they hit about 40, now it's time to look at prostate health. And the way that men can see what their prostate is, what's happening, um, do they have any pain with intercourse, particularly with ejaculation? Are they having issues getting it out or taking a long time? Do they have difficulty um, when urinating, starting a particular stream, stopping it, et cetera? prostate may be enlarged. You can get a digital prostate and rectal exam when you go in for your physical. So once again, it all takes you back to preventative care. Um, Dr. Christina, could you say that line again? Because I'm probably going to use that as a, um, a rejection line. If you are overweight, <laughs> what, say that again one more time. If you're <laughs> overweight, what I said. Yeah, Sonzi says you're beautiful. You're, you're overweight. You're blah blah blah. And what was the other one? Because I, I'm do not. You have, I'm do, not you do you have any difficulty urinating? Do you have any difficult getting difficulties getting an erection? Um, are you out of this breath? Is what I mean. <laughs> But just because they're overweight, does it mean I don't give they... up? Guess what? You might have other underlying issues. I'm not here for it. If you are overweight, you more than likely have some type of pre something, pre hypertension, pre diabetes, pre. Are you pre anything? And if you're overweight and you want to work out, I suggest you get a Peloton, and I can give you a call for a hundred dollars off your accessories. Off your accessories. When you buy that Peloton, I have but one. We can be buy the bike first before you get the accessories. No, you got to buy it at the same time. That's you the gotta buy it at well, the same time. Before we put them on a Peloton, let's just at least get them. Get them. To to get cardiovascular resistance. And that's, that's for all of us. I mean, we all know that you should get 30 minutes of cardio every day. And so when I hear people talk about, I don't have time to work out. Everybody has a TV. That's a smart TV. Download YouTube, do some free videos, get your body weight, strength and exercises up. It's, it's oh, possible, period. So I like this and then for us as women, to be honest with you, I will say that I am currently single and it's very hard for me to date men over the age of 40 because what does your medicine cabinet look like? Are you on hyper? Oh, oh, are you at risk for diabetes, stroke? Like I'm trying to do, I understand for better, for worse, but I'm not trying to marry into somebody who's on dialysis. Like I'm not. I'm not. No. Yeah. What does that mean? What that medicine cabinet do? <laughs> <laughs> what does it look like? What what pills are you taking every day? If you outside with a vitamin, see, but I'm in the good. you go over the guy house and you open the medicine cabinet, and just break and everything fall down. Like my medicine cabinet is right. like Shonda doesn't throw away anything because I swore this medicine expired in like 2016. Right. I think so it's less. Let's swap not just STD results, but what's your fit last physical look like? Can I see your cholesterol, your lipid panel? Can I see where is that? Where is it at, brother? Where's where your, your kidney function? Like those are the things that we worried about now. Back in the day, we used to be worried about what car you drive, how much money you make. You can right. have a ton of money in the bank. I am not taking you to dialysis every day, so get it together. Okay, so we about to switch it up because I'm looking at this stuff. Um, Larry <laughs> says. Oh. His medicine cabinet empty. <laughs> so come on over, Larry, then. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. So, we have two requests. 
Um, you know, Mama Mama Jones and Kyra got their request, <laughs> and they they use Christina as well. So one I love of my Joneses, I love my Joneses. My mom said you look really good, and she Thank said you. hers is the important. But mom, that's going back to women, but the importance of breast exams daily. And then Kyra want to know your takes on the vaccine. Good um, question, Kyra. So I'm, I'm, your mother, your you said your mother wants to know about breast exams. Yes. Daily. So, daily breast exams are okay for um for the most part. You know, it gets kind of sticky when you run into when your cycle's gonna begin and when your breasts become a little sore and more fibrous, kind of like during that time in the beginning of your ovulation cycle. But understanding the contour of your breasts is important. So what do they feel like? What lumps and bumps have been there? What are what um what do they normally feel like? What is new? So just being in tune with your body, knowing what's normal for you and when something is abnormal doesn't take much. Everyone knows when something is different. Also, if you got a mate, you got a boo, let him he's on those babies so he can tell you if something's different. If he's in tuned enough with you, he can say, what is going on on this left breast? Now I'm going to tell you, my doctor did say most ladies who come in and find like lumps on their breast their mate told them because usually they're the ones doing the touching the sucking whatever and they can see something abnormal because we don't always just in the shower doing breast exam as a right. single woman in this day and age um i don't have anyone that is touching maybe, we can find, maybe we can find a monthly self so i mean it's we got it we got it we we take an application <laughs> But um, we can Google YouTube and find everything else we want. So breast exams are there. They're available. They give you step-by-step -step guided instructions. They tell you within the time period of your fertility window that you should actually do them. So yes, breast exams are important, but not as important as going to your yearly physical over the age of 40, getting your um, referrals for your mammograms and getting them done. If you are a woman and you're under the age of 40, um, so you still qualify to have some type of mammogram done, especially if you have a familiar history of breast issues. So that could be histories of breast cancer, breast cyst, um, any of those kind of issues. And then also if you have problems with your uterine or ovarian issues, those tend to kind of they can lead into a secondary cancer of breast cancer. So keeping up with your physical and your annual exams gives you more freedom to be able to have these discussions with your physician, have good documentation so that you can get referrals to get things earlier than the recommended time frame. Okay, so um, Jackie says, what am I feeling for? I just be filling myself up. <laughs> <laughs> Fill yourself up. Just fill it up. If you keep filling yourself up, you'll know what's normal and then you'll know what's not. So what you're feeling for is looking for um, for any lumps, bumps, cysts. Typically, they'll start off as like the size of like a marble and um, they won't be movable. So and then once you're feeling it and you feel something that's not quite right, shouldn't be there. Doesn't matter if you felt it in era. That's when you go to the doctor and say, hey, I felt something that wasn't here before. And they'll send you for an ultrasound of the breast first. The ultrasound of the breast will give a clear indication if there's some type of mass or cyst there, then that will give you an automatic qualification for a complete mammogram. So we can start off with lower imaging to be able to get you up to a mammogram if it's insurance approval that you need it, but you got to deal with it first. And I am going to say, um, with, do you all remember Ananda Lewis? I think she was on either BET or MTV. Yeah. Her mom died of breast cancer and she thought her mom going to get all these mammograms had helped cause and spread it. But no. she refused to get mammograms and do breast exam. And when she finally went to the doctor, I think she's in stage three. She has stage three breast cancer now. Mm. So again, how you said earlier, how a lot of people are afraid to go to the doctor. It's a mm. must. I'm, I'm, yeah. It's, it and I always tell people, find the right provider. Find someone that you feel comfortable with. It doesn't matter what their race, religion, age is. Just find a provider that you connect with and somebody that you can speak openly and honestly about. I tell my patients all the time, I'm like a lawyer in regards to this is a privileged conversation. So you come in here and say whatever you need to, because the more honest you are with me, the more I learn about you and your health and the more recommendations and additional testing I can order. Mm. 
So that that was good stuff. We have we Cecilia. Still have to, oh. No, we still gotta I answer Kyra's message. Oh, oh yeah. no, the vaccine. The we go okay. Let's let's remember this because you know my memory. We go talk about the vaccine, and then Cecilia wants to know: Is it bad to be put on blood thinners for life? Then that's second. So the COVID vaccine is the big debate. So. Yeah. Uh, my first and foremost recommendation is get it. I've already received my first dose. If you notice, I've not grown a horn out of the side of my head. I feel fine. So therefore you're okay. But the breakdown of the COVID vaccine and what people need to understand, the COVID vaccine is not a live vaccine. It is not giving you COVID-19. So the way that, and I won't get too scientific, but if you take COVID, COVID's like a, just a ball of virus. Outside of COVID, there's a protein. That protein that's attached to COVID is what causes the more mortality with it, which is what invades and kills people. You hear these horror stories, they end up in the ICU on vents several days, et cetera. So the research for the vaccine and how it was done, that little protein that's on the side of it is what makes COVID worse. So the study and the research that was done is finding a copy of that protein, finding that DNA of that particular protein. So that is how they essentially made the vaccine. They utilized the protein, they grew a vaccine from that. So in that protein, there's DNA, and you know within DNA is your RNA. RNA is nothing but the instruction panel for the body. The COVID vaccine is actually what we call an mRNA, which is a messenger RNA. So all it does is it takes that COVID-19, that protein, it gives instructions to your body of what COVID looks like. Then once that is given to you, your body will initially say, what is that protein? It doesn't belong here. And then it create, it utilizes instructions. The vaccine is instructions. It utilizes instructions that it was given to destroy that protein, which is that messenger RNA. So you get that in two doses. Um, if you receive the Pfizer vaccine, the next dose is within 21 days. You must receive the Moderna vaccine. Next vaccination is within 28 days. So once you get all of your vaccines, if you were to receive COVID, if you were to contract COVID from somebody, when your body receives that COVID vaccine, I mean, the COVID virus, in addition to that protein, it's going to say, we saw this protein before. We already have instructions of how to destroy it. We already have a mental note of the actual message in regard to that vaccine and they destroy and regard to that virus and then it's destroyed, period. So receiving the COVID vaccine, what it does is it allows your body to create a memory base of what the protein that will kill you from COVID looks like. And if it ever sees it again, it knows how to absolutely destroy it. So then you become a person that is no longer a super spreader you cannot get people sick with COVID. In addition to any COVID that's thrown at you, you're going to be able to fight it because you built up the immunity to do so. All right then. I'm gonna tell you, I was afraid and I'm still afraid. Like with teachers, they're telling educators K-12 or whatever, we can get the vaccine. So afraid. you said who? I wasn't afraid. I just wanna get out of this country. I wasn't afraid. Anything to get me traveling again. I, I'm, I was I'm scared because I kept thinking to ski spear me. I'm game. I, like, I want to get out of here. Anything under 45, I we can't get out trust. Of I, I agree with you. The Tuskegee experiment is real. I did a lot of, um, we actually just finished a COVID paper that's being published in regards to how African Americans feel about the COVID. Be on it? The I'm sorry? Is your name going to be on that paper? Yes, yes. Of course. Oh, go, go. Uh, it's already been sent, so we're just kind of waiting to, to get it back from the journal and then once it's published. Um, but there is real. Black people have a right to be afraid of receiving vaccines and vaccine trials because it's a skeeky experiment. It's very, very real. However, at the same time, we are dying from COVID-19 at extraordinary rates. And it's related to tons of things in regards to our genetics, um, our health in general, how we eat, how we exercise, and then just just a breakdown of the overall health disparities in this country. And that's a totally different subject. So with COVID-19, it's shown us that we need to get in charge of this and we need to get in front of it. So receiving the vaccine is not something to be fearful of. I could see if there was only a trial of African-Americans who want to trial this on you. This vaccine is out. Everyone is receiving it. If you have the option to get it, get it. 
that's going to be the best way of reducing your chance from either catching it and facing the mortality behind it or passing it to somebody that you love. And then also keep in mind with COVID, children are innocently nasty. It's what I say all the time. They just are. They are little cesspools of bacteria. However, a lot of things that cross them, they don't get sick, but they will pass it to you and they will pass it to each other. They're just innocently dirty. Look at this. We're in a room full of cesspools of bacteria. <laughs> yeah. And that's and that's one of the, the main reasons that schools can't open right now, because, I mean, the kids are just going to pass COVID back and forth like ping pong. They'll be fine. However, they'll take the teachers and the administration down. So um, since we're currently remote, I'll just tell you guys at my clinic, I've been responsible for COVID testing. Like I allow the medical assistants to put the orders in, but I have to go in and review the orders, giving people phone calls to tell them that, you know, they're COVID positive, negative, et cetera. And what I found in a lot of families, there'll be three kids. They could be like 13, 16, and 18. They're bouncing off the wall. And then of course, then the parents are actually positive for COVID. Or you'll find that a parent is positive. They got babies and children in the house and the kids are not. So the kids are gonna be super spreaders. They will give you COVID, which will make you sick and they'll be resilient over time. Interesting. So Mama Jones says, uh, my doctor told me I might want to wait for the Johnson Johnson vaccine because it uses the old method of injection with live virus. What do you think? I haven't heard anything about the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. I don't know. Are they applying for like emergency use or FDA approval? I'm not sure. But um if your mother has any comorbidities, then the first vaccine that is available, which more than likely will be Moderna. What's, get, comorbidities? what's comorbidities? What's comorbidities? Well, comorbidities are um, any pre existing illnesses, hypertension, okay. diabetes, et cetera. So if you have a history of those, then those individuals for phase two for the public are actually going to be first to be um, recommended to get their vaccines. Okay. Um, just to let you know, because I know Gretchen has said that when she's in Georgia, Miss Holmes, and she was like, when she comes to Detroit, she wants to see you. Christina is not, not here in Detroit. Detroit. She's Detroit. from Detroit, born and raised, but right now she's in Cali Chicago. Sorry, it was it was it. She's in Chicago. She's been there away. So what from happens me, after like, the drinks kick in? After people. The, we can't remember, but um. She is in Chicago right now teaching at, she's a professor at DePaul University, as well as she's at a clinic. I, yeah. What do you do at the clinic again, please, ma'am? At the clinic, I'm at Chicago Family Health Center and I'm a provider. So I see and treat my own patients. Okay. Um, so we have a couple of things. They, somebody, Ebony just said, hey, Eb, I think Johnson & Johnson is applying for FDA approval. Um, let's see. I heard that black people should go with Madden's because they have more people of color in the trials. What's your thought about that? Yeah, um, I think that person meant Moderna. Yes, yeah. so Moderna had more African Americans in the trial. I received personally the Moderna vaccine, and then my next one is due, I believe, February 2nd. Okay, so you're saying over Pfizer and Moderna, you will recommend Moderna because like she said, there's more people of color in the trial? What I recommend is whatever is available. Uh-huh, uh-huh. If it, whatever comes out that's available, however, mm -hmm. comes out for the general public or when we slide into phase two, and um, then you're gonna find like police officers, teachers, et cetera, city workers that are getting the vaccine. Moderna is what's going to be available because Moderna doesn't have to be stored under the same freezer and below freezing temperatures such as the Pfizer vaccine. And there have been more clinical trials for African-Americans, people of color with the Moderna vaccine. So if that is your level of comfort, go for it. Okay, that's been really good. Thank you about that. So now what you saying that I am gonna say, now I, I think I feel more comfortable eventually getting the, um, the vaccination. I'm not gonna get it this quarter. I just don't wanna die. I don't so, wanna die at all. I got a lot of life to live and I'm loving this life. Like I'm, I'm happy, I'm like, Maybe never been this happy ever before, besides I can't go out, but I'm happy. So let's just switch gears. We got a couple questions and everybody know this is a one hour show. 
Um, we're supposed to go off at three o'clock. Sorry, we may run a little bit over because we want to answer your questions because healthcare is so important. So important in um, our community. So yes. important. So, Christina, do you have a few more minutes? I'm sorry, doctor. Doctor. Christina. Don't call her, just call her Christina. Like, she works. I can, I can call, call her Christina when we just on the phone, but I forgot this is real life. <laughs> you doctor in your real life, too. Oh, we live together. Yeah, yeah. You just don't get a bill, Chandra. Mm. Mm. But yes, Perfect. yes, I have I have some time. Okay. So let's go to the blood thinners. Is it okay to be on blood thinners for life? Well, can we define blood thinners? Are we talking about aspirin, which is like a platelet aggregator? Or are we talking about Coumadin, Warfarin, Lovenax, or some other like legitimate anticoagulant? I don't know. Cecilia, what are we talking about? Please let us know what you're talking about. Okay. Right. So as soon as she chimes in, then I'll be, I'll be happy. But at the same time, if blood thinners are what you need based on an issue that you have, like if you have um, a mesh, some type of surgical implement, pacemaker, somebody says on the right, brain. something that's going on and you have to take a blood thinner, then absolutely. I mean, it's, if it's recommended for you to take the adverse to not taking the blood press, the blood thinner is going to cause a clot and a stroke or result yeah. in pulmonary embolism. Eloquence. Eloquence. Eloquence, yeah. If you have to take it for forever, you have to. There are some people that have had surgeries or different implantations in their body, such as plate screws, et cetera, and they need to be able to not clot around it. So, yes. Interesting. Very interesting. So, ah, uh, thanks. Well, I'm, well, I'm saying thanks, even though it's you that's doing the work, but we had you on. I mean, yeah, and but like, we got it. I think this been that I think this has been very valuable. This has been this very is... valuable. I know that oh, Dr. Nicole I and some thought... doctor tell her I don't want this uterus. So as far as the, the vaccine, um, I know some people have questions about the side effects. So I'll just be totally transparent with you. I received it on I think the fifth and the first day. I was fine. Like, well, I got the vaccine, came home. Then towards the end of the day, I felt like I got hit in the face with a bag of bricks, like super, super sleepy. Didn't understand what was what well, I understood, but I was just super tired and I hadn't been tired all day. So I just kind of chill set on it. Second day, arm was still a little sore, got over it, worked out, got some blood moving around and felt totally fine. So the tiredness that I felt and then also had a little bit of headache the first day, that was because I had exposed my body to that COVID protein and it was busy. It was busy making a copy, making that mRNA, which is that memory, so that it could record what that protein was and it was fighting and destroying it. So that's why I felt a little fatigued and down. That's no different than you, when you get any vaccine. You're exposing your immune system to something and making it get up and do its job. And then I felt absolutely fine the next day. Wow. Yeah. So we, oh, wow. We I just, so that pain or how you feel after, that's good because that means that's your immune system doing what it's supposed to do. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, but I'm I'm glad to know that because if I would have got the vaccine and then came home tired, then I would have had to call her crying that I didn't got the COVID and give her like a whole little speech about how much I love her as a best friend. And I would I would not have called you, doctor. I just would have told everybody I got the vaccine. Listen, call me tomorrow. Call me. You are welcome. Call me. You're welcome to call me, and that would be fine. And I would have told you or Chandra, you're fine. Go eat and drink something and lay down. I cannot be able to call my mom because I couldn't call them first. So if I called them first, so extra. Yes, so extra. Everybody know that about me. I'm a hypochondriac. And I'm I okay just want to lay it. down. No, like, hmm. but somebody needed to know if I'm gonna lay down and not wake up because I didn't got the COVID. <laughs> you you wouldn't have got the COVID. You just would have been a little bit fighting it. You would have been fine. Do you get the vaccine every year? The vaccine? Are you talking about the flu vaccine? Uh, she no. She just said, "Do you oh get the COVID vaccine?" That part I don't think any of us know yet. I don't know if it's going to be a yearly vaccination, no different than with the flu or like the pneumonia that's available every season. Who knows? But I do get a flu shot every year. I don't. You do? I, I do. I do. Well, also remember before I switched over to the clinic and working in education, I was an ER nurse, hardcore. So they were mandated by the hospitals that I worked. Okay. Fine. And I never had any problems with the flu vaccine. I'm not around that many incubators, so those little children. So I, 
I, we don't even want to talk about when I when we supposed to go back into school because that's a soft spot and that made me have us go to the liquor store. But sorry, Greg, it's it's not a small thing because men can get breast cancer as well. Absolutely. Hello, that has happened. Men, you know, prostate. What else, y'all need? And Greg, send us some some topics on what you want to talk about. We want to be all inclusive. Greg, Greg, we have discussed what men need to do. You need to make sure that medicine cabinet is doing the right thing. You need to go get your checkups, okay? Right. Do not be overweight and try to date me or the doctor or Chandra because we're not going to be your nurse. Because we're okay? going to say, what that medicine cabinet What do? that medicine cabinet do? You yeah. cannot be up here playing like you cannot get an erection because guess what? I'm going to find out. And as soon as I see it, guess what? You I hear. You ain't going to stroke I hear, sucker. No. So... <laughs> <laughs> or I'm not gonna find out you have hypertension meds that you don't take, and then now I got to be laid up with a dead body. I'm on the first 48. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Exactly. Like, who wanna do that? Y'all, y'all talk about first 48. Y'all don't know what that'll do to my attitude. Ah, I'm out here killing them. <laughs> yes, yeah, somebody put get your boss check. Yes, get your boss check. Men, the same as women do tra- um, self checks for breast cancer. Yes. Self checks for testicular cancer. Man, we are so like touch your balls all the time anyway. Touch them in the shower, feel them, make sure they're not having pain when they rub together, and there's no yeah. bumps. Men, we are depending on you all to go to the doctor. Stop being afraid of the doctor. Go to the doctor. You want to see my shit when I come back home? What you got? Yeah. So what's your insurance do? Yeah. Right. So Larry checks his balls every day. Good job, Larry. Shit, I almost dropped, lost my drink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and if Larry doesn't check it, I'm sure his wife does. Ah. Okay. So sorry. She, I mean, they just said your partners find stuff that you don't. I ain't got no partner. I'm saying, but I'm just saying one day we we're gonna be doing daily mall checks. So no, this is this is more. This is 2021. You better check your own balls. Around Anything me, is possible in 2021. So and um, somebody put go to the dentist. The dentist is super important. People don't realize uh, ginger. First of all, it's aesthetically pleasing to have all of your teeth in your mouth. But secondly, if you have um gingivitis, it can actually erode into the gum and it really does cause cardiac disease. Oh, oh. Um, uh, So get it checked. Um, Dirty mouths out there. Go get checked. And orbit doesn't help. Dirty mouth. Get an orbit. No, we need to go straight up to the dentist. I go every six months. I go every six months. And anytime that anything bothers me in my mouth, Dr. Jones, DDS in Detroit, he sees me. <laughs> or people typically they'll say they go to the dentist when it hurts. No. No. Something's wrong. Go in yeah. and you'll never hurt. So like in all transparency, I had a food pocket in my mouth and I couldn't figure out why when I was trying to floss, it wouldn't come out. Like I just felt like I couldn't get the food out. And they found out I had a food pocket. And what happened was a filling had came out and the food was locked down there. Got that fixed. Mm-hmm. Don't tell me about my dental insurance. I'm used to it. Thank I'm pretty, um, that's one of the only things I think I'm super judgmental on with men. I don't care how great you look on paper, yeah. you know, your mouth, and I'm like, whoa, I don't want those lips on me. You cannot touch me or kiss me with that yuck mouth. Please get your mouth. Oh, look at that mouth. Look at that mouth like, do. If I go to the orthodontist and the dentist, get these together, you should too. Shoot, they ain't got to be perfect, but it can't. I can't just be like seeing just stuff. stuff. All. I can't see stuff. Mm-mm, I can't see stuff. I mm-hmm. can't. Um, we do need to. Re- it's three oh five. We are over. Sorry, people, if you only had an hour, we are a little over. But this was so paramount that this we talked so to Doctor Christina Ladner. So um, let me say all her um her credentials. Let Please. me put them up because Please. I want you all to know she was <laughs> all of these. Listen, this is my friend. I'm giving her my cash app because she's the rich one. Okay, Dr. Christina Ladner, DMP, ED, AGMPC, AMPBC, assistant professor and adult nurse practitioner. So, which means that she can write prescriptions. Yeah. 
yeah. I write prescriptions legally and I am, I do have all the proper licenses and I keep them up to date in Michigan and in Illinois. So if I ever come, so she I out here. Really care, so. I got two state. Okay, sorry. Always a song that pop in my head. And that um, was our second song. Yes. For today. So we really appreciate our oh, wait. Let me let me consult her because she she has an agenda. How do we do? A, are we doing like a closing or something? How are we? <laughs> wow. Okay, so it's just a regular close. I didn't know if something was after her. No. Yes, Greg. We know it's women with messed up mouths too. Oh, we, Greg, we need to get you a topic because yeah. we don't have Greg on the show, folks. Just just, just wait for the, when you find out what topic he's gonna be on here for, though. So Mama Jones said, great show. We appreciate you. She's one of our um, brand consultants. Yes. Well, I can't wait to hear from Sean and Kyra and everybody else that's part of the brand consulting team for the perfect pair. After the drinks <laughs> kick in. <laughs> yes. But no. And I do, I do also want to share that if anyone has any, any questions or, you know, concerns and before they go to their doctor, I am available to be able to to coach and guide you and give you some wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on. Wait hold on. Now. I'm about to put this information in. Okay, so you're okay. We got Dr. Kristen. Because I'm gonna call the doctor when I and go then, to my doctor. How do they reach you? Um, well, they can start initially, I guess, by can you a message on like Instagram or something. I don't just want random people flooding all my emails. That's too much yeah. for me to navigate through. Okay, so what do you want me what what do you want me to put now? Facebook or Instagram? Oh, either one of those are great because they both come home. Okay, so and then Facebook. I'll get back with them and give them my regular email and all that good stuff. Wait, doctor, I'm going to yeah. reach out because I want. Well, you can get you can get my, my personal information from Chandra. That's I'm going to reach out when I go to my Stop. doctor. Stop, y'all being unprofessional. It's you. Facebook name is it? Just are we being very right professional? Now? I need to yeah. talk to you when I go to my doctor. Right I don't need this uterus no more, and she keeps telling me that I need it, and I'm telling her I don't. I don't right, and I'll, I'll be happy to to tell you what to say. And I don't need for nothing. I don't need for nothing. <laughs> okay, so I have her Facebook up here. If you need to reach Dr. Latner, and I believe Instagram is what CCRN ninety eight. I think. Oh, let me put it. You didn't. Listen, and, and guys, if you know. missed any of this information, we'll put it up for the restream, and you can watch yeah. it over and get all the information that you need. Um. Dang, that came out flawless and not like three cla three glasses in. Like, <laughs> sheesh. Oh, last thing before we go. Alcohol. Good or bad? Alcohol good. is it's never good, but it is. Well, red wine is good. That is alcohol. It's a <laughs> <have> glass occasion. <laughs> But what we do know is that we go beyond the serving size. So a normal serving size of wine is what? Six ounces, mm -hmm. right? But how many of us hey. put pour till it's full. Um, but as far as alcohol, I always tell people if you want to decrease your calorie intake from alcohol, drink it straight on the rocks. When you start doing a lot of mixes, lots of champagnes, lots of sweets, that's when you kick the calorie content up. So if you got to drink, keep it to a minimum and keep it straight. I've been doing a lot of tequila and lemon lately. There you go. It's actually very low in carbs and calories. I'm all about health care. I'm a vodka girl. But if you want, if you do want to have like your mixed drinks or specialty drinks, just limit them to maybe a couple days a week. This is my doctor. I'm going to Chicago from going forward. <laughs> Hennessy, Hennessy is it's okay, but drink it straight. Don't sugar rim. Right. So Hennessy is good. good if you drink it straight. You got to drink it straight. Don't it's mix straight. it. No cranberry juice. No. Um, Mm -hmm. Coke, no, um, just drink it straight. Just go on and take a shot. That's all you gotta do. We doing it, it right. put it in rocks. <sighs> okay, we do appreciate you, Chris. This was Carrera. wonderful. I enjoyed having you on the show. Um, maybe we'll have you back um later on in the year so you can you know go through what we should be doing, you know, like maybe like go. right before the summer, like some if it's something new coming. Or if you have something that you feel the world needs to know because you have such a very important voice, just let us know. Because this is worldwide now. This is. And you know your stuff. You the shit, best friend. Listen. This is thank you guys for having me. It was a pleasure. All right. And all right. thank you all for tuning, tuning in. in. 
remember as always we wait we are here every sunday your favorite two at That's two true. and while you out here people make sure you're masking up washing your hands and if you can stay at home yes so grab your sheets press grab your book um shake and enjoy and you can get it what is it called on the phone I always forget that. You can get it in a hard copy or digital format. Digital? Why can't I remember digital? I'm like, you get it on your phone, but I want the digital or hard copy. I have both. Because when I'm out in these streets. Somebody now, tell really me where she's it. going. To my sister house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, bye, guys. We'll see y'all in two weeks. Thank you. Bye. And we're out. Let's see.